everyone, my name is Emily, and today we're going to be talking about how to come up with ideas for your artwork and what to do if you're struggling with what I like to call artist frustration syndrome. I get asked a lot about how I come up with my ideas and how I'm able to execute them, take them from brain to page. I decided to make a video on my specific process in order to help others develop their own. Now, if you think you're experiencing art block and that's the reason why you're not able to come up with ideas, I suggest watching one of my videos about art block first and then to circle back to this video. If you're just here because you need a little extra help in figuring out how to jumpstart your brain, then feel free to watch on. So let's go ahead and get started. The very first thing I do to get my brain into gear is to start doing some research. I know some of you may groan at the word, but I promise you it's a very pivotal part of the creation process. You probably do research all the time without even realizing you're doing it. What I mean by this is, have you ever been scrolling through Instagram, saving pieces of artwork that really inspires you? That right there is a the kind of research I'm talking about. I'll usually start off on the Instagram or Pinterest Explore page and go from there. I look for artwork or photography that really speaks to me or contains elements that I find attractive. This is not only a good way to help you get inspired, it's also a great way to help support other content creators. Another type of research I like to do is to go to the library and flip through some old children's books. Some of my work incorporates a traditional kind of storybook style to it, and reading classic children's literature has always really inspired what elements go into my art, especially when it comes to line work and texture. Because of this, my son has an absolutely huge library of books because I'll find a book I'm so inspired by, I don't want to be without it, so I end up hunting it down on eBay or wherever and buying it. There's so many different types of research out there, but those are my two primary sources. Other examples include going on an excursion and taking your own photos, which is another great form of research I absolutely love doing and really encourage. It's a more physical way to interact with your ideas and really helps you to get out of your head. Also, don't think you need a fancy DSLR camera to take pictures. You can just use your phone. Similarly, going out and just drawing what you see from life is a great way to hone your skills as an artist as well as to collect inspiration for a finished piece. Another great way to get out and do research is to visit local art galleries and art inclined coffee shops, places where local artists will have their work on display. This gives you an up close and personal viewing of someone else's work so you can really take in the detail, the medium, the texture of the piece. Not only that, but it is yet another great way to support your local art scene. The next stage in our process is to narrow down your research so you can start to develop a more focused but still general idea for your piece. Go through the images you've saved, pictures you've taken, or the notes you've jotted down and start to isolate the ideas and elements that you are most excited about. For example, the piece I'm working on in this video was partly inspired by a bouquet I saw on Pinterest that incorporated berries and succulent, as well as a random jar of antique buttons my mom had in her home. Those two totally separate elements got my creative juices flowing and I started to develop a more refined idea from there. I took other elements that I found attractive and that have been in my work before, like long delicate lines and holes in the flesh, sorry, trypophobia people, and threw those into the idea pot. It is quite literally like developing a recipe. You take ingredients that are appealing to you and you start to experiment with things like structure, texture, and flavor. When you start to map out your piece, it's inevitable that certain elements you had previously chosen may not exactly fit into what you're trying to create. This is especially true if you've chosen too many things you want to incorporate into your piece. If you feel a little overwhelmed or like you're trying to cram too many elements into one drawing, try doing another shave down of your ideas. For example, for the piece I'm working on here, I created a list and divided it into two separate columns. I had one column for conceptual ideas and one column for literal ideas. The conceptual column helped me figure out what my piece was trying to communicate. Now, normally I don't put meaning behind my work. I kind of just make something and let it speak to the individual who's viewing it, but in this case I had a specific set of ideas that I wanted to convey. So under my conceptual column I put the words self-made, divine femininity, regenerate, and under the literal column I included things that I wanted to literally be in the piece, like succulents, muted colors, open wounds, parentheses no gore, <laughs> that's what I wrote, uh, buttons. 
You can label your columns anything you want and have as many columns as you want, but I find having a minimum of two or three is generally pretty helpful. Once you have a very basic cluster of ideas for your piece, start sketching some of those elements out on paper. I'm not talking about a full detailed sketch just yet, I'm talking about creating rough thumbnails. A thumbnail is a small, typically very messy sketch that incorporates a lot of general shapes and gestural lines. Thumbnails are there to help you establish the overall composition of your piece. This is the part of the process where you'll be able to really visualize what elements work best in your piece, what sort of overall shape you want to create, or how dynamic or how simple you want to work. I find it can be really helpful to start taking notes and directing yourself at this stage. You really want to continue to do so up until your last draft, especially if you find yourself getting a little lost in the creation process. Referring to your past voice is a great way to get yourself back into the headspace you were in when you first felt inspired. This doesn't mean, however, that the direction of your piece can't change over time. Giving yourself directional notes can absolutely take on a life of its own completely separate to the piece itself, and that's okay. That's part of the creation process, and it's always something interesting to look back on. It's especially funny when you catch yourself like contradicting or arguing with yourself in the footnotes. So it's like, you shut up. No, you shut up. No, you shut up. No, I said you shut up. No, I said everybody, everybody just shut, shut up. Once you've picked one or two thumbnails that work for you, you're ready to start work on your first draft. Your first draft, like your thumbnail, should also be pretty messy in general, just in a larger format, and it should be a bit more fleshed out. You should also feel free to erase and change things if necessary. Nothing is set in stone yet. In fact, at no point will anything be set in stone, unless you are literally working up to a stone carving, and even then you will have the option to backtrack or even start over. But let's put a pin in that. I will talk about that later. By now, you should have a pretty good idea of what the overall composition of your piece will look like. The goal with your first draft is to begin to add in some detail and to begin to flesh out the composition further. Once you've gotten to a place where you feel satisfied, it's time to jump into your second draft. Your second draft should have a lot more structure and definitive detail and texture. Now, I don't usually go on to make a third draft from here, but you're allowed as many drafts as you need. For me personally, this is the draft that goes on the light board and is traced onto my final sheet of paper, so I take great care to make sure my first draft is well established so that my second draft has a good pair of legs to stand on. Some people don't like to directly trace their draft onto their final piece of paper and would prefer to copy it just by looking, which is actually a great way to help further develop your ability to draw from sight. I am just a lazy millennial who expects something for nothing, so I use a light board. Now that you've slaved away at refining, 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 Finding. Now it's time to work on your final piece. Now the reason I'm not calling this a final draft is because the word draft inherently implies that it's not the final version of something. A final draft would be the last draft before your final piece. So I didn't even include that as a step because as I mentioned before, everyone is different in how many drafts they wanna make. Anyway, semantics aside, your final piece should obviously be worked on with great care. Start with a very delicate hand and a preferably harder leaded pencil to map out the general shapes of your your piece, slowly adding detail as you work inward. If your piece is going to have dark ink outlines, wait until you very clearly got the pencil sketch down before you even look or touch your pens or ink. From there, you just finish up with whatever mediums you have chosen for this particular piece and sit back and marvel at all your hard work. Now, again, to clarify, this is my personal process that I'm sharing with you all. It doesn't make it right or wrong or the only process, it's just what I personally do. You can use this exact formula, you can use this as a jumping off point to develop your own process, or you can say, what is this bitch doing? She's whack, she's totally unprofessional, who gave this bitch a platform and disregard the whole video and make up your own completely different process or some version of those reactions. Before we get into what I feel is the most important part of this video, let me take a minute to thank today's sponsors for making this video even possible.
Today's sponsor is Skillshare. Skillshare is an online community for those of us who love to learn at any level. Skillshare is a huge collective of tens and thousands of different classes for every different genre of creative learning. You can check out everything from music to photography, web design, and my personal favorites, fine art and illustration. Being a mom to a little wild thing with another one on the way, I really don't have a lot of spare time. But that doesn't mean I have to sacrifice my creativity and desire to learn. Thankfully, most of Skillshare's classes are under 60 minutes and packed full of useful tools to help me get started on a new skill. What's also really great is their classes are affordable, much more inexpensive than any in-person option. I just wrapped up a course by Emily Gould called Creative Writing for All, a 10-day journaling challenge. Lately, I've been trying to hone my writing skills a little more so I can produce better scripts and then hopefully produce better creative content overall. The videos I make here on YouTube have a lot of moving parts, and one of the most important parts is definitely the script. Check out the link in the description to get two free months of Skillshare Premium. Come and Start your creative journey today. Explore with Skillshare. But anyway, let me backtrack a little and talk about knowing when to call it quits versus knowing when to take a break, aka dealing with artist frustration syndrome. Creating a more serious piece of work is like a relationship. Sometimes in the height of frustration, it can seem so imperfect that it's not worth continuing. But there are a few things you need to evaluate before you potentially throw away a good thing. Number one, how long have you been sitting and working on this piece? Has it been 20 minutes? Has it been two or three hours with a few breaks to get up and stretch? Or has it been from 11.30 a.m. to 5.30 a.m. the next day and your brain is running on cold coffee and stale biscotti and your butt no longer has feeling left in it? Because if it's that last one, you were long, long overdue for a break. A really important part of creating art is establishing a healthy environment around the creating process. I've got several videos that discuss this in further detail that I will link down below, but for a short and sweet right here, take frequent breaks to stretch and reset your eyes, make time for other things, and make sure you're still eating good food and drinking plenty of water. If you're totally fried, you can't look at your piece with a clear head, and that's telling you you need to step away and have some you time before you can reapproach. Number two, is what you're trying to accomplish above your skill level at this point in time. I know this sounds really harsh, but it can sometimes be the culprit behind this frustration. You have this really grand idea, you can visualize how you want it to look in your head, but the harder you try to execute it, the less capable you start to feel because you just can't get that image out onto paper. It's like your head has all the blueprints, but your hand is being a royal and won't cooperate. Now, before you get discouraged and tell yourself that your art is bad or you aren't good enough, let's evaluate your piece really quick. Pick out the elements from your piece that are lacking the most and start from there. Put a pin in your idea and begin to practice those specific elements until you're able to develop a little bit more confidence with their execution. This may not happen overnight, so I would recommend doing a little practicing, then going forward with the piece as is, and then down the road, try it again as a draw it again challenge to see your progress. And number three, is this feeling of dissatisfaction overwhelming enough that you cannot see beyond it? If this is the case, even after taking some time to yourself, even when you're in a good headspace otherwise, and even after you've evaluated your current skill level to the skill level required to complete your vision, then it might be time to shut down shop on this specific piece. This could occur for many reasons. Maybe this piece is dredging up really negative feelings about something that has happened to you or how you feel about yourself, and it's totally rattling your confidence cage. Maybe it's just one of those damn pieces that you can't figure out why it's just not working, and it's upsetting you to the point of exhaustion. Again, making art is a lot like a relationship, and if the relationship is continuously making you feel like garbage, beating you down, you've got to to learn to call it. Though the big difference between a relationship and an art piece is that years later, you can sometimes pick up an art piece that previously made you feel like shit and possibly be in a better headspace to handle approaching it again. But if a relationship made you feel like total garbage once, that will probably happen again. There's a difference between rekindling a relationship that didn't work out for minor reasons in the past and trying to rekindle a relationship that absolutely devastated you in the past. Artwork 
thankfully, is a little less complicated because the biggest change when you pick up an old piece of art is coming from you and how you view it and not the work itself. Basically, it's okay to admit defeat if you just feel totally dragged through the mud no matter what you've tried. The important thing is that you put in the effort and tried to see it through in the first place. Thank you guys so much for watching and don't forget to stay out of trouble. See you guys later. Bye.